Welcome to the Aptima Combo 2 Assay Reagent Preparation Instructional Video. Hi, I'm Mikhail Musich, and I'm part of the customer education team here at Hologic. This video has been created to show you how to perform assay reagent preparation for the Aptima Combo 2 assay. Because proper preparation of assay reagents is essential to obtaining valid and reportable assay results, I will be demonstrating these procedural steps as outlined in the package insert. These steps and instructions can also be used with the Aptima Trichomonas Vaginalis Assay, Aptima CT Assay, and Aptima GC Assay Reagents. The Aptima Combo 2 Assay is a target amplification nucleic acid probe test for in vitro qualitative detection and differentiation of ribosomal RNA from Chlamydia trichomatis and or Neisseria gonorrhea. This assay is to be used on the Panther and Panther Fusion systems by qualified clinical laboratory personnel specifically instructed and trained in the operation of Panther and Panther Fusion systems and in vitro diagnostic procedures. Let's get started. Follow universal precautions when performing all maintenance activities on the system. Always wear personal protective equipment, including a laboratory coat, gloves, and eye protection. Before handling reagents and samples, clean bench surfaces where reagents and samples will be prepared. Wipe down bench surfaces with a 2.5 to 3.5% sodium hypochlorite solution. Allow the sodium hypochlorite solution to contact the surfaces for at least one minute and then follow with a water rinse. Do not allow the sodium hypochlorite solution to dry. It is best practice to cover the bench surfaces with clean and absorbent laboratory bench covers. The Aptima Combo 2 assay is comprised of the following components. Aptima Combo 2 room temperature box that is to be stored at 15 to 30 degrees Celsius. Aptima Combo 2 refrigerated box that is to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. And a box of Aptima Controls Kit that is to be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. The probe reagents are photosensitive and should be protected from extended light exposure. During reagent preparation and storage, take necessary precautions. The assay reagent kit has a reconstitution stability of 30 days when all components are stored appropriately. Additionally, the kit has onboard stability of 72 hours on the Panther system. The controls are valid up to 24 hours after being pipetted and a valid result is received. The control validity will be negated if the reagents are removed from the system control results are invalid, or after 24 hours, unless a pre-selected time frame less than 24 hours is configured. Check that the lot numbers on both boxes match and that the expiration dates are valid. Open the room temperature box and remove the following components the master lot barcode sheet, reconstitution collars, target caption reagent bottle, also referred to as TCR, selection reagent bottle, amplification, enzyme, and probe reconstitution bottles. Set aside the master lot barcode sheet, TCR, and the selection reagent bottles. Open the refrigerated box and remove the following components. The amplification, enzyme, and probe reagent vials. The refrigerated box also includes the target capture reagent B bottle, also referred to as TCRB, for now, set aside the TCRB bottle. Pair each reconstitution solution bottle with its matching lyophilized reagent vial. 
The Reconstitution Solution bottles and reagent vials have matching label colors for easy pairing. Check that the lot numbers on the bottles and vials match the lot numbers on the master lot barcode sheet to ensure that the appropriate reagents are paired. Once all the lot numbers are shown to match and expiration dates are valid, move forward with pairing the reagents. Warning, while performing the following procedure, avoid creating foam when reconstituting reagents. Foam compromises the level sensing in the Panther system. Adequate mixing of the reagents is necessary to achieve expected assay results. Ensure that each reconstitution solution bottle cap is appropriately labeled so that the caps can be easily identified when removed. Open the lyophilized reagent vials and firmly insert the notched end of the reconstitution collar into the vials opening. Open the matching reconstitution solution bottle on the bench, setting the cap on a clean, covered work surface. Then firmly insert the other end of the reconstitution collar into the bottle opening. It is best to prepare one reconstitution bottle at a time. Slowly invert the assembled bottles. Allow the solution to drain from the bottle into the glass vial. Thoroughly mix the solution in the glass vial by swirling. Wait for the lyophilized reagent to completely go into solution. Then slowly invert the assembled bottles again, tilting at a 45 degree angle to minimize foaming. Allow all of the liquid to drain back into the plastic bottle. Remove the reconstitution collar and glass vial. Then, discard the reconstitution collar and glass vial. Recap the plastic bottle. Record operator initials and reconstitution date on the label. As an option, additional mixing of the amplification, enzyme, and probe reagents using a tube rocker is allowed. The reagents may be mixed by placing the recap plastic bottle on a tube rocker set to 20 RPM or equivalent for a minimum of five minutes. Pair the TCR and TCRB bottles. Check that the lot numbers on the bottles match the lot numbers on the master lot barcode sheet to ensure that the appropriate reagents are paired. First, open the TCR bottle. Set the cap on a clean, covered work surface. Then, open the TCRB bottle and pour the entire contents into the bottle of TCR. Expect a small amount of liquid to remain in the TCRB bottle. Cap the bottle of TCR and gently swirl the solution to mix the contents. Avoid creating foam during this step. Record the operator initials and current date on the label. Recap the TCRB bottle and discard. Locate your selection reagent bottle. Check that the lot number on the selection reagent bottle matches the lot number on the master lot barcode sheet. Record operator initials and the current date on the label. Before loading a new reagent kit, on the Panther monitor, navigate to the Task screen and select the Load Assay Reagents button. At the bottom of the screen, select the New slash Activate Lot button. A new slash Activate Master Lot window opens. Using the handheld barcode scanner, scan the Master Lot barcode on the Master Lot barcode sheet. The lot number of the new Master Lot populates the Master Lot barcode text box. The window expands if the master lot barcode is new to the system. If the master lot has already been registered, a message, master lot is already registered, will be displayed on the screen. No other actions are needed to register the kit. Press cancel to continue. Now the assay reagent kit is ready to be loaded onto the Panther system.
Before retrieving a previously reconstituted kit, ensure that a clean work surface designated for reagent prep is available. Previously reconstituted amplification, enzyme, and probe reagents must reach room temperature 15 to 30 degrees Celsius prior to loading onto the Panther system. As an option, the reagents may be brought to room temperature by placing the reconstituted amplification, enzyme, and probe reagents on a tube rocker set to 20 RPM or equivalent for a minimum of 25 minutes. If reconstituted probe reagent contains precipitate that does not return to solution at room temperature, heat the cap bottle at a temperature that does not exceed 62 degrees Celsius for one to two minutes. After this heat step, the probe reagent may be used even if residual precipitate remains. Mix probe reagent by inversion, being careful not to induce foam prior to loading onto the system. Do not top off reagent bottles. The Panther system will recognize and reject bottles that have been topped off. Adequate mixing of the reagents is necessary to achieve expected assay results. Thoroughly mix each reagent by gently inverting prior to loading on the system. Avoid creating foam during inversion of reagents. This step is not required if reagents are loaded onto the system directly after mixing on the tube rocker. Place the amplification, enzyme, probe, and selection reagents into the corresponding positions of the reagent rack. Remove and discard the caps from the assay reagent bottles and visually inspect each reagent for foam and bubbles. If bubbles are present, use a sterile cotton tip swab to pop and remove bubbles. Rotate the bottles to ensure that the barcode for each bottle is visible through the slot in the rack. Open the reagent bay door. Lift the rack by the handle in the back, supporting the rack with the other hand. Before loading the rack into the reagent bay lane, Ensure the on-screen reagent bay lane graphic is bordered in purple and the reagent bay lane LED is flashing green. Gently slide the reagent rack into the appropriate lane. The reagent barcode reader will automatically scan the reagent rack and assay reagent barcodes as the rack is being loaded. Close the reagent bay door. When the reagent rack is successfully loaded onto the system, the TCR carousel stops spinning. This process may be delayed if reagents are currently being pipetted. Once the TCR carousel stops, the TCR door unlocks. Open the TCR door. Mix the TCR bottle by gently swirling. Be sure to avoid creating foam. Remove the cap and inspect the bottle for foam and bubbles. The TCR position will need to match the loaded reagent bay lane from the previous step. If necessary, rotate the TCR carousel to ensure the proper placement and position of the bottle. Ensure that the appropriate size TCR adapter is loaded into the needed TCR carousel position. Press down firmly on the TCR bottle to ensure that the bottle is fully inserted into the cup. Verify that the barcode of the TCR bottle is visible through the slot of the cup. Close the TCR door. The TCR carousel starts to rotate and the system scans all TCR carousel positions. For new kits, after the TCR bottle is scanned, the supplemental reagent information window will automatically appear. Enter the reconstitution dates for the loaded reagent kit and press accept. The assay reagent kit can be unloaded from the system whenever the kit is not actively involved in assay processing, as indicated by the Elaine LED being green or off. Removing reagents that are not in use preserves assay reagent onboard stability. The assay reagent kit associated control status is invalidated when the assay reagent kit is removed from the system. To unload the assay reagent kit, open the reagent bay door. Be sure that the LED for the lane is not red. Gently slide the reagent rack out of the reagent bay lane. Once the reagent rack is unloaded, the TCR carousel will stop spinning and the TCR door will unlock. Unload the TCR bottle for the corresponding reagent kit that was unloaded. Close the TCR door. Place new caps on all the reagent bottles.
Store the reagents in the appropriate storage conditions. Amplification, enzyme, and probe reagents should be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. The selection reagent should be stored in 2 to 30 degrees Celsius, and the TCR should be stored at 15 to 30 degrees Celsius. Remember, these reagents must be loaded together onto the Panther system for subsequent testing. Make sure that the room temperature and refrigerated reagents are easily identified as a set. Thank you for viewing the Aptima Combo 2 assay reagent preparation instructional video. Thank you for choosing Hologic.